Hello and welcome back to the Radio Mechanic. Today we're going to take a brief look at capacitance meters and bridges, find out why they're useful, and find out why some of this older vintage gear, this is roughly 1963, the manual has zip codes in it, which puts it about 50 years old, is still viable and useful in the lab. And we will cover this one. We'll also take a look at this Chinese made LCR meter as well as looking at this Boonton capacitance meter with a range of uh, 2 picofarads up to 2000 picofarads and see how, how they work and see what their uses are. We'll also take a quick look at how this machine or this instrument has held its calibration over the last 50 years. Uh, there's no cal sticker on it and we'll show you one of my capacitance standards and yes this calibration standard is well out of date however when I have two or three or four capacitance standards and they all agree with the meter and none of them have been touched or played with that makes my that puts my confidence level extremely high uh, I tend to believe that everything's working correctly. As long as everything agrees with everything else, I see no need to send this out to a Cal Lab. I don't do Cal Lab work. Now this meter, when it was built, was meant for laboratory work. It's an extremely accurate piece of equipment. The manual tells you to turn it on and leave it on. They used to leave this stuff on 24-7 in a lot of labs just to keep it stable. I don't think this one ever had that kind of service. Uh, it's very clean. Uh, when I opened it up, all the original tubes tested well. And we have just put it all back together, checked it with a calibration standard, and I use this as my transfer standard. If I have other meters that I want to calibrate or, you know, see if their functionality is correct, I reference them to this. The downside to this bridge, it's large. It takes, oh, 15 or 20 minutes to warm up to get stable enough to be, uh, so that you don't have to keep chasing the, uh, the, the null on the bridge. And it's a little bit slow to use. Now, if I was doing hundreds of tests a day or dozens every day of the week, I'd buy one of the more expensive Hewlett Packard LCR units, which are still selling for five to six hundred dollars. I paid a hundred dollars for this and for the few times a month that I need it or a few times a year even sometimes that I need it I know I can fall back on this and have an accurate standard to reference to and we'll show you how the calibration is on this machine and if you'll give me a minute I'm going to hook the cables up down here to this calibration standard that's on the table and we'll take a run through and give me a minute please okay I have two cables down here connected to my calibration standard actually the low side cable is connected to the standard the high side cable right now is floating and we're going to null the meter to compensate for the length of the cables so I'm going to return this dial to zero and then we will trim these in to compensate for the length of the cables and I may have to tweak this just a little bit over here that's getting close and as you can see it's uh, as Big Carl would say it's fiddly it takes a little bit of time to dial everything in that's pretty good that's close enough to a null we're on the times 0 0.01 scale the reason being if I was to leave it on the times one scale this is a 30.05 picofarad standard if I was to leave it on the times one scale I would only be here on the dial and I'll move in a minute and take a look at uh, get the camera closer to the dial for you by going to the 0.01 scale we run all the way up to 300 being 30 picofarads and you get a lot more resolution out of the meter so I'm gonna dial this in oops did I shoot past it here oh 
What am I doing wrong? Oh, ha ha ha, dummy. I forgot to hook up the capacitor. So, we all have brain cramps. And we're gonna plug in the other cable on the capacitor here. Now we should see a null. When we get up to three. And it's still not working. Oh, point 0.1 scale. Let me start this over again. Okay, we have a capacitance standard of 30.05 picofarads on the bench. And that is connected via these two cables. We have a low side and a high side. You connect the low side to the standard, leave the high side floating at the other end momentarily until we zero in the bridge. We're going to set our capacitance range on 0.1. Now, if I was on times one, the 30 picofarads would be at 30 on this lower range. It doesn't give us a lot of resolution. We want to get up to a much higher or a much more uh, accurate spot on the dial here. So we'll go to 0.1, which will mean 300 on the upper scale. So we're going to end up with 300 on the upper scale for 30 picofarads and the 0 0.05 will dial in on the lower scale. Right now the meter is reading upscale just a little bit which means we don't quite have a null. So I'm going to null this in. That looks pretty good. Now we've compensated or dialed out or compensated for the capacitance of these cables so they are no longer a factor in our measurement. And again, this is a little bit fiddly and it takes a while, but the accuracy of this is just superb. Now we've connected our 30 picofarad standard and you can see we went upscale. So I'm going to move the camera in and get a little bit closer look here for you. I wonder if this would be better without the overhead light. Maybe just a little. Okay, now we have our capacitance standard connected to the cables and I'm going to begin to advance this. There's 10 picofarads, 10, 100 on the upper scale, there's 20 picofarads, now we're coming up to 30 picofarads and you see how quickly that drops off. And we're going to null this very carefully. And I will move, now that we have a good null over here, I'll move the camera in closer on the dial. Okay, I believe that's in focus. The red hash marks that are on the dial are actually from black to red is, would be from 200 to 250 and then the red covers 250 to 300 to let you know where you are on the scale. 300 right now is for 30 picofarads and if you see down here on the red because we're on the red section of the dial it's 350 or 300.05 excuse me that 50 designates 0.05 because we're on the times 0.1 scale so that is reading it's very hard to read here let me on the so it would be 51 at the next division, so that's 50.055 something, 557 maybe, it's not quite 8, if I know a little bit. So that's 50.055, and the standard is 50.05. That's close enough for the girls that I go out with. Okay, as my friend Big Clive would say, let's do the maths. If we consider that the meter itself could be off as much as 0.25%, that means our 50.05 picofarad standard could read anywhere from on the plus side of 50.175 picofarads to on the low side of 49.925 picofarads. However, our 50.05 picofarad standard is reading 50.055 picofarads, 
which is a mere 0.01%. Now, I don't know about you, but that leads me to believe that this bridge is operating superbly and I can trust it as a transfer reference to my other equipment. And just as a quick note, we should also mention that not only can we use the remote cables for measurement, we can remove these, go directly to the binding posts, and measure capacitors that way. And if you have chip capacitors with one of these little guys, you can plug that in over here. And your chip capacitor mounts on the very tip of this guy. So we can measure chip capacitors, and this could also be used on my uh, inductance bridge to measure, to measure uh, chip inductors. So it's a fairly versatile piece of equipment. To add to the versatility, you can make up one of these little boxes. This was nothing but a cable TV splitter. It had a BNC on this side and two on this side, so it was very convenient to use. I merely removed everything that was inside of this, and this is a really simple unit. There's nothing special about this whatsoever. Let's see if we can pull this apart. Hang on. Okay, we have two binding posts on the top and a couple of quick connect posts as well for small capacitors and on the inside it's nothing more than a connection to the binding posts from the two BNC's from the center connector the shields become the ground and the low side and high side simply connect there and you don't have to do anything special here you don't need to worry too much about stray capacitance because you null that out just like you would with the cables once this is on the end of the cables, you merely null the meter again and place your capacitor here. And we'll do a real world check. We have some Dow Corning glass capacitors here. These are very, very stable. They have very tight tolerances and will remain within tolerance for many, many years. I've seen these on the internet. They're asking $30 a piece for some of these. Uh, I don't. I can't justify that kind of money. I came into several packages of these and a lot of stuff I bought and found these to be extremely accurate and extremely stable. And when I want to transfer my data to another capacitance meter, I'll take one of these. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to... Let me go into the macro lens here. Oops. Uh, macro. Will it let me do it? No, it won't let me do it while I'm filming. This is an 8.2 picofarad. And according to the code on here, this is plus or minus 0.25 picofarads. So let's measure it and see what it measures. Okay, we've taken a couple of readings on our 8.2 picofarad capacitor using our little fixture. And I to keep the video short and not bore you to death, I've done it behind the scenes here. Our 8.2 picofarad capacitor carries a tolerance rating of plus or minus 0.25 picofarads which means on the high side it could be as high as 8.45 picofarads on the low side theoretically it could be 7.95 picofarads to meet tolerance I took two different readings on the meter on the Boonton meter on the lower range of 0 0.1 I had a reading on the dial of 82 0.6, which equals 8.26 picofarads, which means the capacitor is 0.06% high. Well, well, well with intolerance. <clears throat> on the low side, on the point, our 0 0.01 scale, we had 821.6. Remember, as the divider gets larger here, or smaller here, the number is going to get higher here because we have to go further up the scale and you're going to get a little more accuracy up here. So 821.6 equals 8.216 picofarads which is decimal 0 0.02 percent. So I think it's safe to say that capacitor is A well within tolerance and B our meter is working very well. Now we'll take a quick look at our uh, Chinese LCR meter here that I purchased online and 
We don't expect much from this. After all, it wasn't very expensive. But surprisingly, it's not nearly as bad as we thought. It comes with these two leads, and those two leads can be used to measure something like this variable capacitor here. Actually, we could do that very quickly. We will connect the black lead to the frame of the capacitor. That's our low side. We'll zero the meter to compensate for that. And then we will connect the lead over here on the capacitor. And we have 145 picofarads fully meshed. And about 15.75 pico. Whoops, we're not even open all the way. Hang on a minute. That's better. We have about 11 picofarads fully opened. Now I've measured this before and it's very, very, very close. But let's take a look at that 8.2 picofarad glass capacitor that's over here in our fixture for the Boonton. We'll remove that. We'll remove these two leads to get rid of stray capacitance because at 8.2 picofarads, every little bit helps. And we'll re-zero. You can see what went to minus 3.57 picofarads. So we'll re-zero. And we'll plug it in to the provided connector on the front. 8.32 picofarads. Now, it's off a little bit from our very highly accurate Boonton, but for most uses, that is more than enough accuracy. I mean, let's, let's be real here. How close do you really need to be? And again, if we run the numbers that we just got from the uh, Chinese LCR meter, 8.2 picofarad reading 8.35 picofarad equals 0.04%. So you're better than 0.1%. You're better, you know, way better than 1%, better than 0.1%. You're 0.04% accuracy. Now, for something that costs as little as that thing does, that's pretty amazing. And we'll take a very quick look at this Boonton digital capacitance meter. Now I know this meter is out of calibration a little bit, but for going through my box, and I have a large box of these variable capacitors and various sizes and capacitance, it's good as a quick reference. And 5% is more than good enough for variable capacitor. So, oops, I forgot to plug in it. If you buy one of these, I paid $20 for this one. Make sure that it has the adapters that go with it. At a bare minimum, you want the one with the coaxial connectors on it. Having the one with the quick clips is a nice uh, option. But if you have one of these, you can build one of those little boxes you saw, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. But we'll plug in this adapter to the front. And you notice it's now reading 0 0.059 picofarads. So we'll zero the meter. or get it as close to zero as it will to compensate. Come on, come on. There we go, that's close enough. And we'll plug our capacitor in and see what it measures. And it's 7.93 picofarads. That's about five, six percent low. But for most uses, that's absolutely fine. Uh, if you need more accuracy, then I go over to my Boonton Bridge, the other one that I know is very accurate. But for quickly sorting through unmarked capacitors, that'll get you close. And then if we remove this, and we plug in this unit. Now this meter covers 2 picofarads to 2,000 picofarads. If you put a 2,000 picofarad capacitor across here, you've now increased the range to 4,000 picofarads, so it will go past the 2,000 picofarads if needed. And we'll find this is the low lead, 
So we'll plug that into here. We'll plug the high lead in over here. And you notice now we have 0.391 picofarads. So we'll dial that out. Whoop, too far. And I forgot to do something. I should have plugged these in. We'll plug in two alligator clips to the binding posts. And re-zero because we've just added some more capacitance. Ah, my hand was interfering here. Try to stay far enough away. Close enough. Close enough for a variable cap. And we'll check the other gang on this capacitor, which I know is a little bit different. Uh, let's see, we'll flip the thing over. Plug it in over here. And now we have fully meshed 150 picofarads. And fully open, we have 11 picofarads. So that's good when you want to go through that box of junk capacitors real quick and find out what they're reading, what their values are. That'll give you a real quick way to check them. And again, don't pay a lot of money for those. You'll see them on eBay for three and four and five hundred dollars, and that's ludicrous. Look around at the ham radio flea markets. You can pick these up pretty cheaply. Okay, one last trick on the old Boonton here. I've put a 001 microfarad, or as the young players today like to say, a one nanofarad capacitor in here, which is a thousand picofarads. Uh, and I'm just using the terminals on the front of the meter. Uh, this, is just, this is just a generic, cheapo disc ceramic capacitor, nothing special. And we're on times one. And we're just going to dial this thing up until we see a null. And you can see the meter coming down. I hope you can see it in the screen. Oh, right there. And being probably a 20% component, it's reading 931 picofarads. So it's probably well within tolerance. But you notice we haven't got a very deep null. That's because this is a large enough capacitor that it's now beginning to exhibit some reactants at the test frequency. And the test frequency on this bridge is 100 kilohertz, and that seems to be the de facto fallback on just about every capacitance meter, capacitance tester I've seen. 100 kilohertz. All the bridges seem to run there. So now we're going to dial in and see if we can null the reactants. They call it conductance or micromoles, and those guys that work on vacuum tubes will be familiar with moles. And it also reads directly in ohms. So we're going to zero this and we'll go back and re-null. And we'll zero this again. And there we go ahead. We have a pretty good null right now. And this is 100. See if we go over here it's 200. So we'll come back to the zero. Ugh, it's so touchy. So 100, this would be 50, it'd be 10, 20, 30, right? So, or excuse me, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so it's 10, 10 micromoles. From that, you can calculate Q of the capacitor, and from the Q, you can calculate the dissipation factor of that capacitor. And on this particular meter, Q would be point or 0 0.628 times capacitance times micromoles. That's capacitance in picofarad, micromoles, which were 10. Dissipation, and that will give you the Q. Dissipation will equal 1 over Q and you'll have the dissipation. Now I'm not going to go into full electronics theory here. There's a lot of people that do that a whole lot better than I can do it. 
One of them would probably be over at the Signal Path blog. Uh, very, very deep into theory. Very, very, uh, very clear. He, he explains everything very clearly and obviously a very very bright engineer and if you want to go over to his blog the link will be up at the top I also suggest you go visit uh, Big Clive's Big Clive does all kinds of teardowns and lots of interesting experiments with LEDs I think you'll find enjoyable and by the way if you've gotten anything out of this blog please give it a thumbs up I'd appreciate it uh, as I find more and more out about YouTube I realize that the viewership and the number of thumbs up go a long ways towards the rating on the uh, on YouTube as far as they're concerned about allowing you different privileges so please give it a thumbs up if you like it I hope you found uh, some of it informative the uh, Chinese LCR meter that we looked at today what I paid for it at the time was a value. Uh, they're getting a lot of money for them today, a lot more I think than they should be charging for them. There's a lot of alternatives out there. And uh, look around, go to the ham flea markets, look around on the internet, look for reviews. This one's working well for me, but I would look around today. I wouldn't spend the money they're asking for these today on this unit. Uh, the Boonton Capacitance Bridge, if you can find one of those for $50 to $75 or $100, and it's in real good condition, be a nice piece of equipment to have in your lab. Uh, and that's the mechanical bridge, the old-time one. And uh, maybe next time around we'll do the inductance bridge. We'll compare the inductance bridge, the Boonton, versus this one, as far as inductance readings. And again, if you're doing it every day in the lab, day in, day out, um, one of the Hewlett-Packard LCR bridges that's selling for four to $600 on eBay might be the way to go, one of the newer ones. I don't do enough of it to justify it, and the equipment I have here is quite accurate. So once again, thank you for stopping by. I hope this didn't run too long. We're trying to keep them short. That's why I'm trying to stay away from heavy theory. I'm just trying to do some quick equipment reviews and give you some options. Take care. See you again.